When I was in ninth grade, I was amazed by these artwork, and I always wanted to make something like this, but I was never able to do it due to the lack of my art skill. And for many years, I have forgotten about this artwork until recently. After doing some research, I found out these artwork are by Mikhail Gustafsson. They were developed for this video game called Among Trees, which is one of the most visually stunning video game I have seen. In this Blender project, I tried to recreate something similar to this, and here is what I came up with. Overall, I think it is very similar to Mikhail's style, but I am still lacking the art composition skill that he has. But if you do want to create something similar to this in Blender, then stay tuned and I'll show you the process. To start off, I went to Affinity Photo, which is like Photoshop, and then created the tree. I mainly used this pine tree stencil and the clone tool for this process. Once I was happy with the look of the tree, I moved on to Blender. And the first thing you want to do in Blender is delete the default cube and anything in the scene. In order to bring the tree image, you want to press Shift A and then click Image and then Mesh Plane. And this is the same step I'm going to be repeatedly using to bring in 2D images or 2D plane into the scene. You also want to click this rendered viewport setting to actually see the drawings. After scaling up the tree, I went ahead and added the camera and two sources of light. I then duplicated the trees multiple times and placed it throughout the scene. Next, I went ahead and placed two cubes on top of each other to create the fog. Which, in order to do that, you want to go to Shader Editor and then delete the principal BSDF and then add a volume scatter node instead. And then lower the density and change the color to whichever color you like. During this time, I found out lowering the IQR level for the trees makes it stand out better. So I went ahead and lowered it for the trees and then everything else that I'm going to add later on like the mountain or the grass. After duplicating the trees few more times, I went ahead and played around with the fog and eventually decided putting them front to back was looking much better than putting them top to bottom. Next, I went back to Affinity Photo and created the background mountains. But this time around, I went ahead and added a little bit of gradients to it. When I put the mountain in the background, it wasn't actually showing up due to the two layers of fog. I tried messing around with different sliders in the principal BSDF, but eventually, increasing the emission tab solved the problem. I then went back and tried changing the fog colors to find a better combination of colors. I then went ahead and added a ground plane. And instead of placing each tree individually, I used this plane to create a particle system. And the way to do that is by selecting the ground plane, clicking this particle tab and clicking add. Then selecting here and checking the advanced button. Then you want to scroll down to the render and then instead of render as path, you want to select object and then use the dropper tool to select the tree. I also used the scale and rotation button to make the trees face the camera and also scale correctly. One useful tip is to make sure the origin of the tree is at the bottom of the trunk. And you do that by clicking this option button and selecting origins and moving the origin wherever you want. And then make sure to deselect origins once you're done with it. One last thing, the best part about using a particle system is that now I can control exactly how many trees are in the scene. Moving on, I went to the world setting and changed the color to more of a bluish color. The next thing I did is instead of using the sun as the light source, I added a large area light over the whole scene. After messing around with the fog colors a little bit more, I decided to add another variation of the tree. Once I brought the new tree into Blender, I clicked both trees and then press M and click New Collection. Then I went back to the particle system and instead of object, this time I clicked Collection and then selected the collection. Now there were two different types of trees in my scene. After rendering out a scene, everything was looking great except for the mountains in the back. They were kinda hard to see, so I went back to Affinity Photo and then changed the color to more of a reddish gradient. And I think that made it look much better. Next, I added the grass. And similar to the trees, I went to Affinity Photo, drew some grass and then brought it into Blender. 
but the difference here was that I made it into different layers. The idea behind this is I'm going to move them individually and make it seems like it's moving in the wind. After putting them all together and putting them into a collection, I animated some moving one direction and I animated the other ones moving the other direction. It's not perfect but it gets the idea across. And then I went ahead and added another particle system and did the same exact thing I did with the trees. But this time I went to weight paint and then color in the areas that I want the grass to be in. But the problem that I ran into is now since because they're in different layers, now they're separated and they're also not following the original animation. After scrambling for a long time and clicking random buttons, I finally figured out how to solve this. I needed to check this whole collection button right here. And now everything is animating correctly, all I had to do is correct the rotate and the scale. After that was fixed, I was basically done with the background. I decided to add this elk model from Sketchfab. But for some reason it was becoming multiples. And if you run into this problem, just know it might be in the wrong collection. For me, it was in the same collection as my grass. So once I moved it, it fixed this issue. The next issue I ran into was actually being able to move the elk into my scene. In order to fix this, I added an empty sphere and then parent it to the elk by pressing Ctrl P. Now whenever I move the sphere, it will move the elk with it, but also retain the original animation. After placing the elk in the scene, I decided to make the horns and the eyes glow. All I did is went to the emission tab in principal BSDF and then increase that amount. But to make it seems like it actually is glowing, you'll need to go to the compositing tab and then click use node and then add a glare node. And then you can change it from streak to bloom or anything you like and change the strength. But one thing to note is that you can only see the effect after you render the image. And I learned this from this YouTube shorts video, which I will link in the description down below. Next, I added these bushes the same way I added the grass. And finally, I added these floating particles following this YouTube tutorial video, which I will link in the description down below along with anything useful that I learned from this whole process. Overall, this whole process was pretty easy to do and I think it turned out pretty great. It's not as good as Mikhail's artwork, but I'm happy with the result. Before finishing this off, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has shown support on my last video. That video got over 6000 views and I have gained over 150 new subscribers. So thank you so much and I hope you guys keep on supporting me. But that's enough of me talking. Thanks for watching and here's the final result.